And back in the studio, Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week, and we just give a segment just to her. Just kind of, what are you seeing in your gardens? And your gardens are pretty spectacular. You, you are not allowed to have any more containers at the house. That is it. The irrigation will not handle all of your plants. No more. So when you put one in, take one out. Well, I can tell you. You bring one more home? No. <laughs> you can replace one, but you can't have no more pots. You can have something in a pot, but the irrigation only... And your patio is just solid pot. She's got over 50 containers out there, folks. And she wants more. So, oh, to be a garden center goddess. <laughs> but there's one plant I really, yeah. really, really, really want. I may have an open plant. Right. There's the kale. I'm replacing the ornamental kale oh. with stuff. So we might be able to free so we have some time to transition. Black-eyed Susan vines that came in. Oh, those are neat. So there's a real pretty one this year that has a white and pink. Usually they're orange and right. like a dark orange this one's white with pink flowers too so okay i'll bring it home. bring it and then <laughs> but it's got to go in a pot to replace okay, something else can, we'll get rid of the kale i'm stressed out who needs that healthy stuff and we'll put a pretty plant in. <laughs> all right so what do you got okay. for us this week you're do your inspiring so, gardeners that are tuned in yes. and they want to garden how so many people who are out there wanting to garden are also gardening to attract birds and butterflies oh, into yeah. their yard and the most famous one they want to attract are the hummingbirds i would say uh, the swallowtails you think so or the monarchs you know butterflies you yeah. know, like birds? oh birds oh sorry yeah <laughs> oh. sorry i'm a man i, I tuned out i wasn't listening <laughs> anyway so i thought i would talk about some perennial flowers that you could put out in your yard that will definitely attract those hummingbirds nice. and the butterflies so the hummingbirds are they're looking for tubular flowers because yeah. they and they also eat a lot. So the great thing about having um, hummingbirds in your yard is they eat insects as well as the nectar. That's true. So they need both. They need that protein and that carbohydrate, that sugar, to keep going. So they'll help with the insects. Plus they're just kind of fun to watch. So things that are tubular that they like, and for you, just in Radio Land, I have show and tell. So you just have to imagine. <laughs> so this is a great plant for here. This is a um, break light yucca. So it's a yucca. So it's very drought hardy. Not going to take a lot of water. Loves the sun. Put it in a hot, hot spot and it'll be happy. It sends up this bright red stalk of flowers that have the flowers have like little tubules yeah. in them. So hummingbirds actually love them. So this is an easy grow plant to throw out there. You don't have to think too much about. Um, not a lot of maintenance, not a lot of water, but the hummingbirds love it. Put it out there for you folks on ridge lines. Mm -hmm. The more wind, the better. <laughs> the more sun, the better. The more rocky, terrible soil, the better. Don't put it on drip irrigation. Water by hand. That's what yucca does. It's like yeah. agaves are the same way. Cacti. They, mm -hmm. These are all, they're all companion right. plants. And this doesn't do it justice. It's a little one in the studio, but yeah. this will turn into a three by three by three. Well, this brake light's dwarfed. Three by three Call by it three. knee high by knee high. <laughs> yeah. And then it just has multiple stalks. It'll have three, four, five, six flower stalks. It with blooms this bright all red. Summer. Oh yeah. It'll literally bloom all summer Great up plant. until fall. So a good one for hummingbird. Another one that... Most people know about, but it's a good reminder. So this is the salvia. Autumn sage is the other name for it. Another great drought hardy plant you can put in a hot spot. Um, it actually does quite well in a shadier spot too, yeah. I have discovered. So very versatile plant. Uh, there again, you got the little tube flowers. They just love it. Look how bright red that is yeah. on camera. That's crazy. It really it's like it's almost glowing color. in the dark. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it'll do the same thing in your gardens. Right. And it also comes in purple. It comes in uh, like a peach salmon color, a white color. And it's not like you just have to have red. I mean, yeah. the hummingbirds aren't going to care. Yeah. Uh, the red's pretty for us, but they'll go to red, they'll go to pink, they'll go to white, purple, you pick it. They, they just, like the taste more right. than the color and the shape of the flower, mm -hmm. but they're all going to be knee high cover. They bloom from now through autumn. Thus the name autumn sage you actually get more beautiful as they grow mm -hmm. and fill in. So autumn, yeah, this is like yeah. a number one seller at the garden center for attracting butterflies and hummingbirds, both. Yeah. Definitely. So great one. Another one is uh, the penstemon, 
also known as Beard's Tongue. Uh, but you can just, this one's a pink, I forget the name of it. Pink Let white. me help you. It is uh, Harlequin Pink. Harlequin Pink. It's a Pinstamen. really bright pink with white centers. Beautiful. I love the Pinstamens. Uh, just a great little flower for here. There again, it come in a multitude of colors. Uh, kind of a multitude of varieties. Pinsimmon is a big family of flowers. Yeah. So, but great ones for those hummingbirds. And native. This mm -hmm. grows wild. You're seeing a red, a white. There's a pink that just grows wild mm -hmm. on the floor. You see a tall kind of kind of uh, a perennial wildflower that uh, that that's growing. And and the the hummingbirds will actually bicker and fight over this. They're going, no, it's mine. No, it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> they're kind of like they're kind of like seagulls, only in, in miniature <laughs> form. Mine, mine, nice. mine. Yeah. So and, and you, those folks that are tuned in on the on the video piece, the YouTube channels, there's no filter on this camera. Right. This is the natural color. It's actually glowing on film that just looks it's so bright and so colorful. That's how hummingbirds see it as well. Mm -hmm. Tinstamen. Yep. So hummingbirds like those tubular flowers. Butterflies, they kind of like landing pads. So they like flowers that have more of a surface that they can land on and suck the nectar, nectar out that way. Uh, so yarrow is a great one. So I brought this yarrow. This is, I think, desert sea, red something, red yeah. desert sea. Um, very good. Great drought hardy plant. Loves the sun. Put it in a spot where it's nice and hot. and It'll kind of just continue yeah. to bloom all season long. This one's a real pretty red one, but it also comes in yellow, moonshine yellow. Uh, there's a terracotta color. So there again, a few different colors in there. doesn't matter the color. It's the plant itself that they like. So this is a really good one to put in as well. I put a native yellow in our backyard. And mm -hmm. this takes, again, surprising little, it doesn't get full sun. Right. It maybe gets four hours and it blooms a crazy long time in our personal gardens, but it will go full on in, in, in the wild. It's right out there in the full bright from morning till evening, bright, hot sun. Mm -hmm. It's got this real thick uh, kind of, kind of thick foliage that protects it. And so just, you're going to have butterflies yeah. if you've got yarrow. And it's pretty animal resistant as well. Especially the yellows them. and the whites. Uh, yeah. Sometimes a deer can have the on the pep paprika mm -hmm. colors, but yeah, they're they're tough. Okay, so that's a good one. The scabiosa, which is an absolutely horrible name. Uh, the other name is pin flower, pin cushion flower. Pin cushion's better. So this one usually comes in pinks and uh, lavenders. I've seen it occasionally in white, not as pretty in white. I like the pinks and the lavenders. Um, has a beautiful little flat flower that sticks up above the foliage. So the foliage is low get down and then the flowers stick up probably what, eight, 12 inches above that foliage. Yeah, easily. Um, and just a beautiful little plant to put out there in your perennial beds, your yards, does very nicely Looks here. like a pin cushion. I mean, literally that's, <laughs> that's the name. name. That's looks like a pin cushion. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of those, you seamstress out there, but butterflies look at it and go just yummy. Delightful. Yeah, I can they just hang out and rest and meet. And they'll just rest on the pads, mm -hmm. enjoy each other. Definitely. So we're almost out of time, but I'll show you one more. Of course, we have to show this one. So this is a butterfly plant. So this one's purple, but they come in. There again, a multitude of colors and a multitude of sizes. You can yeah. get some that go six to eight feet, some that go four to five feet, and some that are two feet. So some of the pugsters are nice. Buzz Hot Rhapsody Butterfly Bush. So that's about a four buddy, foot, yeah. four by four one. Um, beautiful bright flowers on them. Blooms all summer long. I mean, you're just kind of deadheading and making them pretty. And you We're out of time, time, baby. You got more yeah. here. So lots well, of butterfly plants. We've got a list. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a look at that, go to watersgardencenter.com. Tap the learn button, and there's a butterfly, learn at the very top. There's a butterfly and hummingbird plant list right there with these and more. Yep. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back.